and then we actually analyze all of the gases given off from that uh, from the sample coming out of the oven. We want to understand what has the role of water been in the past history of Mars. And so by looking at the different minerals and seeing how they've uh, reacted with water, we can tell something about the uh, aqueous environment on Mars. And although this mission is not actually designed to look for life, we want to understand the question of habitability and whether the situation is such that ice could exist in the past. For the TIGA instrument, we can analyze eight samples, and that's uh, all we can do. We're bringing along eight different ovens, and they can only be used once. The top goal of the Mars program is to uh, search for life. And the first landed mission to Mars focused very specifically on that, and that was the Viking mission, which flew in 1976. The thing was that the Viking mission found no evidence of organic compounds on Mars. Now, in fact, that turned out to be a significant result because there were less organic compounds found on Mars than one would expect even from an infall from meteorites. So there are less organic compounds on Mars than there are on the Moon. There are all these mechanisms at the surface that would, if there was a record of life, it would wipe it out. So you have to dig to get to that record of life. You have to get into the subsurface. And the question for Phoenix is going to be, can we get deep enough into the subsurface to sample that record? Now, if we are lucky enough to find organic compounds, we've also brought along a blank sample, and that's to make sure that if we're seeing small amounts of organic materials, we know they're not contamination that we've brought with us. Obviously, we try to make things as clean as we can to avoid that possibility, and that's why we have this clean room here that we can build an analyzer with very, very little organic contamination uh, that we have in it ourselves. The clean room has really cost us an awful lot, uh, both in terms of the money to set up the clean room, but also in terms of the time in that almost anything you do in the clean room takes probably three times as long as it would take in a normal laboratory. Right now, this is probably our most stressful time because we're really up against the gun of delivery and we really don't have more than a few days left and if things go wrong or if some of these repairs we're making don't work there's there's some chance we might not even be on the, the spacecraft and we certainly wouldn't want that to happen. If we are lucky and everything works right and we see organic compounds there I mean we're just going to be going crazy and we'll be probably drinking some organic compounds of our own. The first instrument installed on the lander was MARTY. It arrived March 23rd at Lockheed Martin Space Systems Facility outside Denver, Colorado. Delivery of a qualified instrument is its own successful landing, so to speak, for the instrument team, and it's a launch for the spacecraft assembly team. So this one does LIDAR, so we do the car, then LIDAR, and then MECHA has its own launch. So okay. Today, we would be putting four instruments on the spacecraft, as, as you're seeing, we're putting two on because one of the instruments is having difficulty in its final testing, and then the order with which we have to build the spacecraft prevents us from putting the other one on. So we're, re we're replanning a little bit right now. The biggest challenge really is that when you get down to the last set of electronics that you can build due to the old technology, is you've got no safety net. So that one is very discolored. Yeah. I wonder if we had a snap a photo of that. You know, if something goes wrong, if you break those, if something goes wrong, there's very limited spares available. Just because something's worked one time doesn't mean it's going to work again. So we have to be diligent every day, you know, always expecting that there could be a problem out there and making sure we find it, if it when it's there. It's really a, an exercise in systems engineering and optimizing the design space. If you push on this here, something else is going to pop up over there. Having a planetary lander is an entirely different endeavor than building an orbiter. It's essentially two different vehicles that goes through a metamorphosis in between these two primary configurations. The real challenge between the thing is balancing the design needs of a, of a cruise vehicle and a landed vehicle into a single set of design solutions uh, that perform all the functions. So it's really like doing two vehicles in one. And what we have over here, this is uh, this is what's called the back shell. 
The back shell is the, the outer part of the vehicle that protects the, the lander inside of it during its cruise, cruise uh, phase to the planet. Um, it uh, protects it from all the heat and the elements.